All right, it is 5.30 and the meeting will come to order. Uh, Ms. Gore, will you call the roll for us? Present. Mr. Benjamin. Present. Mr. Dunn. Present. Ms. Williams. Present. Thank you. If you will please stand and we will uh, say the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask Mr. AHS Luke McBride to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Nice and <laughs> You can stand right there. That'll be fine. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If you'll please remain standing for just a moment of silence. Thank you. You may be seated. All right, so uh, big presentation tonight. I'm going to turn this over to Mr. Goforth and uh, let him take it from here. Good evening. Uh, we're excited to see such a, such a great audience tonight representing Arlington High School. Uh, this is a special night for us as we're here tonight to recognize our AP scholars. So uh, all of these students are, have worked really hard and very deserving of this honor. So at this time to start the presentation, I'm going to turn it over to the Arlington High School administration, Mr. Abraham, our principal, Ms. Donna Penny, the vice principal, and Mr. Gibson, the assistant principal at Arlington High School. Uh, distinguished uh, ACS board members, district office staff, family and friends, today Arlington High School would like to recognize the outstanding accomplishment of several high school students in the area of academics. College board bestows academic distinctions on deserving students based on their performance on their AP exam. The AP Scholar Awards are academic distinctions for students to cite among their credentials on their applications and on their resumes. The awards are as follows. First, we'll have our AP Scholars. Uh, these students are granted uh, who receive scores of three or higher on three or more of their AP exam. So when I call your name, if you all will please come up to receive your certificate. Abby Albrand. Cameron Allen. Luis Apricio. Sarah Bandy. Maya Brown. Allison Bryan. Margaret Burnett. Maxine Calkins. Michael Schernisser. Kedron Childs. Abigail Deloso. Colin Chapman, Amber Devini, Cora Freeman, Abigail Hammonds, Logan Havlett, Mary Therese Hinkle, Kirsten Jimerson, Stephen Krantz, Nathan Linnell, Alexandra Martinico, Connor McBride, Omar Medina, Emma Moisen, Nathan Montgomery, Patrick Myers, J. 
James Wynn. Abigail Amara. Drew V. Pertel. Ava Scott. Andrew Spann. Anthony Tran. Annie Tran. Will Turner. Claire Walker. Sydney Walker. Abigail Wells. Alexander Wood. Logan Weimar. Next, we have AP Scholars with Honors. This is granted to students who receive an average score of at least a 3.25 on all the AP exams they were taking and scores of three or more on four or more of their exams. Ready? <laughs> Jenna Bakta. <laughs> Caitlin Bowling. Nathaniel Humphrey. Trevor Jones, Anna Keo, Margaret Lauterbach, Aditi Ravi, Patrick Tenbrock, Max Whelan, Next, we have AP Scholar with Distinction. Now, this is granted to students who receive an average score of 3.5 on all their AP exams and scores of three or more on five or more of these exams. Cameron Campbell. Mia Conley. Catherine Fedotova. Caitlin Fong. Anna Lee Eirich, <laughs> David Kramer, Tyler Littlewood, James Ma, Afna Muhammad, Darlene Nguyen. Elena Owens, Mia Palmer, Emma Tran, Sarah Wong, and Carter Whitworth. If you came in after your name was called, anybody? <laughs> Again, I'd like to thank the uh, ACS board for this opportunity to recognize these outstanding students. Thank you all.
this podium right here. Okay. I don't know Tyler's going to have a job. Yeah, that's the hardest job of the night. I saw them sending a bunch of pictures in there. I didn't even have it today. I'm in third period. Oh, we got you. Y'all good? Anybody else in the picture? Yep, grab it while you can. All right, thank you, thank you. Thank you. takes to accomplish what you guys did and uh, so thank you for being here tonight parents thank you for being here uh, we're going to dismiss you if you want to leave you're welcome to stay for the meeting uh, but if you need to leave we'll take a little break to let you uh, get out of here Stick around. Hear what we're talking about. Stand out for you. That's right.
Are you ready? All right, we will move ahead uh, in our meeting. Uh, Ms. Gore, do we have any citizens' comments? No comments. Okay, we'll move to the approval of uh, the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? I move to approve the agenda for April 23rd, 2024. A motion by Ms. Williams and a second by Ms. Conley. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, the ayes have it. The motion passes. We'll move to reports. Uh, we'll start with Chairman's report. A couple of things that um, I just want to bring to your attention. Um, there are some state awards that, uh, that are opportunities for our students to receive every year to compete in. And so uh, I spoke with Mr. Mayo. I think he put some people together about a, a student achievement award and a student student volunteer, uh, sorry, sorry, a school volunteer award. And so we'll actually be submitting two people or uh, one person for each of those, uh, for each of those awards. The rest of those are not um, uh, due for nominations until uh, late summer or the beginning of the next school year. And so we are submitting those. We're going to try to submit one for all of these uh, this year uh, just to, to stay in that competition uh, for sure. Uh, moving on to a couple other things. Uh, I appreciate you guys turning in your evaluation of the superintendent. He had a fantastic evaluation. It turned out to be like a 2.999. A three is the highest you can get. And so uh, it was an excellent review for the superintendent. So thank you for uh, doing that and, and getting that in, turned in so timely. Uh, so we could do that and get that done whenever we uh, were responsible to. There are some things for us to discuss. I'm trying to uh, figure out a time and a, a way for us to discuss some things that are pertinent to next year's budget that we need to do together. And so uh, I'll keep you guys apprised as soon as I can figure out how we can do that and do it appropriately and um, uh, do it legally and all that kind of good stuff. So I'll, uh, I'll just follow up with you as soon as I get some information on all of that. And then one last shout out to um, uh, our spring sport, a couple of spring sports. Uh, they were written up in, um, I, I think it's the Daily Memphian uh, or John Varlis, I think is the one who wrote it up that our baseball team is 21 and five and our softball team's 22 and four. And so they are leading their division and uh, just kind of killing it this spring. And so it was really cool to see as well. Just lots of good things happening at Arlington High School for sure. Uh, that is all from my report, uh, superintendent's report. I'll give that to uh, Mr. Goforth. Thank you, Mr. Benjamin. Uh, I know Mr. Mayo has kept you all updated with our happenings and things going on in the district. So what I'll do is I'll go directly tonight into the departmental reports. And just one thing from academics I do want to share. As you know, we'll be having our summer camp at Donaldson Elementary School this summer. It's required by the state. Uh, we have about 160 students signed up so far. Uh, we will have, usually we've had two locations. We'll have one location. That will be at Donaldson. We've had one at Donaldson and the middle school in the past. Our, our numbers at middle school are lower, therefore we have put everything under one roof, be easier to manage, and it's just more fiscally responsible as well. So we will have our summer camp at Donaldson, that's June 3rd through the 27th. So I just wanna let you know that that will continue on this summer uh, with about 160 kids enrolled. So uh, with that's all I have really pertaining to academics. So I will uh, check in with the other departments, uh, Ms. Speakman. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Ruff, operations. No uh, Dr. Clark, human resources. No All right, and Mr. Hill with communications. Good evening, board members. Uh, so I have uh, two things I wanted to report about tonight. Uh, the first one being that I can't really take credit for what I'm about to say. It all goes to the Arlington High School Fine Arts teachers and Dr. Ed Ducey, who actually got this going. Uh, but Arlington High School has been named a Tennessee Arts Academy Arts Rich School of Merit, which is actually a fantastic year to happen, considering we just opened up that eight and a half million dollar expansion project right. over at the high school. Uh, but what's really interesting, they are one of only 10 schools across the state to receive this recognition, and that includes both public and private schools. Um, as a merit finalist, AHS is now in the running for the TAA Arts Rich School of the Year Award. 
Um, so in addition to a pretty lengthy application process, Dr. Ducey says this is one of the most, uh, not cumbersome, but intense application processes that he's been a part of. So in addition to that, the school also has to give an on-site tour to representatives from the TAA. We also had to create a five-minute highlight video, which is why I'm reporting this tonight. Uh, I helped put together that um, highlight video. Uh, but they'll have their... Um, their on-site campus visit, I believe, next week. And so we're, we're continuing to go through that application process to see if we will be deemed a school of the year uh, for TAA. Um, but what I wanted to show tonight is actually give you a sneak peek of that video. We haven't released it publicly yet. We wanted to do it tonight here at the board meeting first. Uh, but what's really interesting when we started discussing about how do we want to highlight the fine arts program at Arlington High School, that's a big thing to highlight. How do you pick and choose and so we really wanted to make sure that we were student focused. So two of the students that narrated the video are current high school students. Uh, so you'll see that and you'll also see different testimonials from other students and some teachers as well. So I will turn the time over to that video. Welcome to Arlington High School. I'm Toby Harrell, a senior here at AHS. And I'm Priya Bonnie, a junior. And we're standing here in Arlington High's newest expanded fine arts wing. This wing represents an eight and a half million dollar investment into the fine arts here in Arlington Community Schools. And it's a testament to the creativity happening within these walls. The fine arts aren't just classes here. They represent who we are and who we want to be. Join us on the journey as we take you through what we've built here at Arlington High. You'll see why we're a place for everyone. I think Arlington has like one of the only programs that like, I keep saying that, but they care. Like a lot of art classes are there just because it's kind of part of the criteria, but like when you walk into an art room, they want to see the best. So that happens through critiques, that happens through after school activities. Like they're really pouring a lot of resources and time and effort into making sure those students not only have fun and enjoy that class, but the ones who really want to do it succeed. The fine arts experience at Arlington High School is ingrained in our culture. Just this year, more than half of enrolled students have taken at least one fine arts course, many of them starting here in the visual arts, where we have four levels of art classes offered in both standard and honors, where students are challenged to think critically and engage in different cultures that go beyond Tennessee. Sometimes they come to class because of the arts program. That's the reason they're here. That's what they get excited to come to school for. I think we give our students a place to belong. You know, they, they, they get to find their people here. Um, for a lot of students, it's a way to earn scholarships and further their education. Our visual arts students are consistently known across the region as being among the most talented. This past year, bringing home more than 130 scholastic art awards from Best in Show, Gold Keys, best photography, and more. Our talents as art students are shaped by our, can we say world class? Our world class instructors who are always bettering their crafts to inspire us with new and fresh ideas. And our music programs are a shining example of their influence. I was shocked with the amount of people that were in each orchestra and each ensemble. And I was super, super happy to find people like that. And it's just, I've been able to expand and grow my name under me instead of under like a brand or a person. And I remember like remembering how long band camp was my 10th grade year and being like, oh, I do not want to do this. I'm done after this year, getting my fine arts credit. And band camp and like that whole season was the best experience I could possibly have had. It's made me a more fun person, a more mature person. Like it really makes me enjoy the small moments in life because like I, this won't be forever. We're proud to be known as a powerhouse in the region for all of our music programs, a best communities for music education. And just this year, Arlington High School received the designation known as sweepstakes in our local contest. This means all seven performing arts ensembles receive superior ratings from all judges in performance and sight reading. To me, the, the great things about music and band particularly uh, is the community aspect. It's working together as a team. It's working through adversity. It's having hard days, it's having hot days, uh, but the lessons that they learn about persevering, working with each other, leaning on each other, encouraging each other, uh, the relationships that they build, all of those things I think are what make band 
uh, and music so special. The magic of the arts continues on stage in the Mark E. Collins Theater, where musicals are brought to life. Our newly revamped auditorium and expanded backstage with its massive prop workshop and newly minted dressing rooms give student actors the space to not only develop their skills on and off stage, but we're creating an enchanted and mysterious world that immerse the entire Arlington community in the arts. And our annual participation in the Orpheum Theater Awards often snags multiple nominations, setting our students up for wicked success. Rounding out our Fine Arts Hall is certainly one you won't forget. Our Media TV Arts Program, Tennessee's number one high school TV station in 2023, as awarded by the Tennessee High School Press Association. Here, students are thrown into hands-on challenges that give them real-world experiences in the field. From filming, editing, writing, producing, and reporting, our students are building their future careers in television, film, and journalism right now. We've only scratched the surface of what our students are creating in these halls. It's just crazy to think where our graduates have ended up. SCAD, Chicago Symphony, designing for Target, the Grammys. See, but Fine Arts at Arlington, it goes beyond the stage. I know with some of my closest friends, I found them all throughout different fine arts programs here at Arlington. Absolutely, and we've all created memories throughout the arts. And that's why we're a place for everyone. It's where we think, create, and achieve. <laughs> So when we first laid that video out, it was seven and a half minutes. We were capped at five minutes. So that's how much we had to like really trim down. So again, like how do you look at Arlington High School's fine art program and like narrow that down into five minutes? So we did the best we could, uh, but just the fact that our, our teachers and, and our students over there have been named one of only 10 in the state uh, for this award is huge. Uh, so we're proud of that, but we, we hope to be named School of the Year and we're supposed to know sometime this summer. So that is on that front. Uh, my second report tonight uh, deals with the legacy grant. So as you know, uh, thanks to your support, along with Mr. Mayo's and the budget, uh, we launched the legacy grant program this year. Um, as a reminder for anyone you know, watching, uh, this is our student activity fund that was to help clubs, organizations, sports teams, uh, basically help fund different initiatives that uh, they're facing as organizations and to ultimately offset costs for both students and families in general. Um, it's also directly tied to our portrait of an ACS graduate strategic plan. Uh, that's to support the interest and involvement of students by identifying clubs and organizations that are actively engaging students in real world learning. So because of this grant program, we've actually been able to bring organizations that went away, we brought them back. We've been able to seed new clubs and organizations. Uh, so it's been really helpful, but I really want you to hear from people who have been recipients of the Legacy Grant this year. So I've asked just three of the many that we've awarded this year to come tonight to present to you uh, to kind of give you a feel of how it's helped them. So tonight I have Arlington Elementary's Caroline Harrison. She's representing the fourth grade team at AES. Uh, they launched a really cool initiative this year that I'm gonna let her tell you all about. Uh, but Caroline, if you could come on up. Um, first of all, thank you so much. Um, we launched the House System Initiative in fourth grade. If you're not familiar, it's founded by Ron Clark. Um, we've actually sent some teachers to Ron Clark's Academy, but um, basically um, it's a house system, not Harry Potter, no magic, none of that. Um, but we sorted the kids into four different houses, um, Isabendi for Courage, Altruismo for Givers, um, Revoir for Dreamers, and what's the last one? Uh, Sorry, Altruismo, Husbandi, Amistad for the um, friendship. And so we took all of the kids in fourth grade and sorted them based on their personality, their values, and we even sorted the teachers as well. And we had a whole house sorting ceremony um, where we moved them all around to different houses. Um, and Basically, we wanted to use this as an opportunity to motivate them during the time of the year that it's the most difficult to be motivated. So it was January, it was cold. We were getting ready to take state tests. And so we came up with a point system where they'd earn points for challenges, test grades, homework, just being at school, got them points, um, and wearing their house shirt on Fridays. And so about every two weeks, we'd 
put the points on the wall and whatever house had the most points received an incentive. Um, we did things like silly string uh, where kids were saying it was like their best day of school ever. And we did prime and popcorn, um, all these different ways to kind of get them out of their comfort zone um, with people that are kids that they don't normally get to interact with because we put them in these home rooms and then they don't get to really interact with kids they don't know because they're fourth graders, so they don't really step out of their comfort zone unless we force them to. And so it gave us an opportunity to, as teachers, build relationships with kids who we don't get to interact with normally and motivate them, give them a sense of belonging um, to something. They were. We had kids that hadn't done homework all year that were doing homework so they could get points for their house. Um, and so the Legacy Grant afforded us the ability to incentivize them in fun ways. Um, we also have a house celebration planned um, in a couple weeks where all the houses will come together and they'll be awarded the house cup for the house that earned the most points. So um, we've seen so much come out of this. We've had kids that you know, previously may have felt like outcasts or felt like they didn't have like a group to belong to excited and feeling like they had kids that were motivating them. And I was able to build a relationship with kids that I hadn't had a chance to build a relationship with. So um, we're so appreciative of you guys giving us um, the money and the opportunity to um, motivate these kids and get them excited about school. Um, we hope to maybe push it into other grade levels next year. Um, oh, and we're also getting them t-shirts so they can kind of have their house pride um, and carry it into the next years. And um, so thank you so much. Uh, we, we appreciate it so much. That's awesome. Thanks. And if you didn't see it, we did do a spotlight video on their house initiative. Go back on our Facebook page and look at it. It's really cool. You'll see how uh, involved students got into that. Uh, so next, uh, our middle school representative, we have Reese Gardner. She's representing the AMS Fine Arts, uh, specifically the band, choir, and orchestra. So Reese. I'm short. <laughs> Good evening. Um, I'm Reese Gardner. I'm the band director at Arlington Middle School. Um, this Friday, April 26th, the AMS Fine Arts Department, the band, orchestra, and choir will be heading to Branson, Missouri, specifically Silver Dollar City, to um, compete in the Music in the Parks competition. I will be accompanied by 235 students, 54 chaperones, three, three directors, and two administrators. Uh, the AMS Fine Arts uh, trip is a yearly tradition, a trip that the students look forward to all year. It's a huge opportunity for these young musicians to perform on a different stage, allowing them the ability to not only showcase their talents, um, but also receive feedback from different adjudicators. Traveling together fosters camaraderie, sharing memories, and working towards a similar goal. It cultures enrichment, broadening students' perspectives, and deepening their understanding of the world around them. It pushes them out of their comfort zone, navigating new environments, interacting with different audiences and judges, and adapting to situations, promoting personal growth and resilience. Not only this, but this trip is a huge part in maintaining our music excellence here in Arlington, promoting some of the best that there is to show in Arlington community schools. As we planned this trip, our main concern was cost. As you know, everything has become more expensive. Um, the price tag for our six charter buses needed for our journey to Missouri came to just under $31,000. Um, thanks to the ACS Legacy Grant, this expense was completely covered for our program, allowing us to reduce the per student cost from, two, from $400 to $300. Uh, we aim to keep these trips as affordable as possible to ensure that as many students um, as possible are able to have the chance to participate. I want to extend my deepest appreciation to a the ACS Legacy Grant and to the Board of Education for their approval. The ACS Legacy Grant has provided our music program invaluable opportunities for growth, learning, and enrichment, leaving a lasting impact on our students, directors, and music programs. The support we receive in Arlington Community Schools is truly remarkable, and it's exciting to see such dedication to music education. Thank you for your ongoing support. All right, thank you, Reese. And finally, um, our high school representative, Mr. Mark McDonald, he received a legacy grant that helped fund both the AHS Model UN and Youth in Government, and he actually has a presentation for you. So, Mr. Mark. Flipping the slides, is it this one right there? 
Okay. Uh, good evening, uh, board members uh, and Mr. Hill. Thank you so much for uh, giving me the time to speak and brag about my club a little bit. Uh, so I am the faculty sponsor of the uh, H uh, AHS uh, Model UN and Youth in Government Club. Uh, and this is essentially what we do. Uh, it is the entire purpose of the club is to provide students with opportunities for civic engagement through uh, simulations of different types of governmental systems. Uh, so the Model UN program is about recreating and simulating the United Nations and the work that the United Nations does. And then the Youth and Government program is about simulating the work that the Tennessee state government does and all the various elements of it. Uh, these two programs are run through the YMCA. Uh, they, we travel for both of them. Uh, the Model UN program, we travel to Murfreesboro for that conference. Now the Youth and Government program is unique really in the country because Nashville allows us to use the actual Capitol building and facilities for that conference. So when the students go and participate, they're walking in the halls of Cordell Hall building, in the Capitol building. Uh, when we have students that are arguing cases uh, for the Supreme Court, they're in the court chambers. Uh, they're not just in a, a conference room somewhere, which is incredible, right? Uh, so I, I was trying to think of uh, the ways that the club uh, meets the portrait of a graduate as well. There's so many different things that we do, uh, so many ways that students can participate. Uh, we have students who are uh, acting as members of legislative bodies with the General Assembly and also with the State House and Senate. Uh, and they write bills together as groups. Uh, and the purpose then of the simulation is to travel both to uh, the United Nations and to the uh, government conference and debate those bills with peers from around the state in order to get them passed or resolutions passed by the General Assembly. Uh, and so we're not talking about small groups here. This is, uh, the average size is anywhere from 800 students to over 1,000 students from across Tennessee uh, that our students are then engaging with on a regular basis, uh, acting as student leaders, uh, and engaging in various aspects of civic participation. Uh, we also have students who are able to act as lawyers uh, they have to write case briefs for actual cases, uh, uh, preparing to argue both sides of the case, and then they argue in front of student judges. Uh, and there's a number of other components as well. Uh, what's also unique is that these programs rely on student leaders. So once students have participated at least once, they can then run for those office positions. So it's not adults who are sitting up in the front of the room, it's other students who are acting as the justices, as the speaker of the house, as the um, uh, all kinds of various offices. Uh, so it's really a phenomenal opportunity for students to act as leaders uh, in their community, but also here. So the legacy grant, which we are so appreciative of, uh, has really helped us out with those, uh, with those conference costs. Um, the conference costs is the, is the biggest barrier uh, to students participating. Uh, the conference costs, as you can see, in the fall and spring of 2022 and 2023, uh, those costs were about $520 uh, per student for the fall Model UN and then spring 2023 before the legacy grant. $565 per student. And uh, I think it's also, you know, this is a relatively new club, so our numbers were kind of low, but I do, th I do know that cost did prohibit some students from being able to participate. Uh, and so we had 15 students participate in Model UN in that fall and eight students participate in the spring of 2023. Uh, and then we saw, because of the legacy grant, uh, and, and also recruitment, but definitely because of the legacy grant, we see huge uh, increase in participation then uh, from this year. We had 31 students register for both the fall and spring conferences, 23 uh, people served in the General Assembly, eight students served in the Court of Justice from Model UN. We had someone serve in the, uh, what's called the Governor's Cabinet. She was the Secretary of Ten Care. Uh, while she was there, we had someone in the press corps, we had 23 members of House and Senate, and another six served as lawyers in the Supreme Court, uh, and all of whom right, were able to go and participate uh, as a direct result right, of this legacy grant uh, and what it's provided, the opportunities it's provided for this club. And so the results are tangible. Um, the pictures on the left-hand side are of that first year that we participated, and, and these kids definitely did a great job, but you can see in the picture on the top right just how much our club has grown. Uh, it really is um, a direct testament of the work that we've done, but also the financial resources that we've been afforded. Uh, and we also came home with all kinds of awards this past spring. Uh, we had eight individual recognitions for outstanding statesmen, uh, outstanding bill writing, outstanding brief writing, 
uh, probably the the proudest that I was at the end was we had one of our students who was elected as one of the officers for next year's conference. She's going to be clerk of the court for the Supreme Court. She's our first officer in the club. Uh, and so she was so excited to get that. That was Caroline Godsey. Uh, and so I think that the results really speak for themselves in terms of the impact that this grant has had for us. So uh, for my club and for our students and for their families, I can't thank you enough for this opportunity and, uh, and hopefully for the continued opportunity in the future. Thank you very much. All right, thank you all for speaking tonight and uh, kind of sharing your stories with the Legacy Grant. So just to kind of wrap up, we've discussed this before, but I just kind of want to bring it back to the forefront. And again, anyone listening for the first time, uh, there is an application process that we have for the Legacy Grant. So they have to go on and detail what their needs are, how the funds will be used, how it directly benefits students, how it ties into the portrait of the graduate, but also do they already have access to funds, either through a school account or a booster account? Because what we want to make sure is that we're spreading these dollars at as far and wide as possible. And so we also wanna make sure we're being equitable. So if you have, you know, 50,000 just sitting for cash, you know, just, to, you know, you're just sitting on it, right? Well, then maybe we're not gonna approve you until you maybe you spend that down or you can, or you can show at least how you're using that money. Uh, so we're really, you know, targeting it towards groups, clubs, organizations, sports that are in need of these funds. So to date, we've awarded nearly $300,000 in grants this year that have directly benefited students and classrooms and organizations like you heard tonight. Uh, we will probably have one more round of approvals this year, so that money, that, that total is likely to go up a little bit. Um, and let's see, and I think that's it. If, if at any point you ever wanna look at the entire list of things that we have approved, I'm happy to provide that report for you, but you'll see, you'll be able to get a deeper dive in how we're actually targeting uh, different groups from classroom project initiatives, but also clubs, sports, really the whole gambit of uh, student activity. So I'm happy to, um, to provide that to you if you want it. But that is all I have tonight, unless there are any questions. I do have a question. Okay. I guess you don't know, but I'm just, your opinion on why we probably haven't reached the full allotment of that, is it uh, that maybe it's not publicized enough to our teachers, they're not familiar with it enough, it's just kind of getting rolling, it's like, oh, we have the opportunity here now to do that, is that, that's kind of what goes on in my own brain, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, I think that's being part so of it. it. I think uh, we've had a lot, we haven't denied so many this year, but, but what we want to make sure about is that it's specifically going to a student activity. Okay. So we've yeah. had a lot of requests for professional development, that doesn't come out of this fund, so I think it's just the fact that it's new, that people are learning, like what can it actually go towards? Yeah. Um, and just getting the word out like that. Yeah. Um, so I think Good. that's would be the answer to that. Good. Thank you. Of course. Anything else? Okay. Thanks Thank so you. much. Thank you. Yeah, I guess that's a, uh, I mean, just listening to these three for me is like, this just blows me away uh, to hear and see all this going on. I would just say for all of you that are in charge, Will you find some way to let me know that, us know that? I'd love to be able to come and see some of these students in action and just see what they're doing because I think all this stuff's really cool. And I, I you know, to be able to see, uh, you know, sometimes from our vantage point, we hear some of the not so good things that happen. Uh, I'd love to see, I'd love to be a part and lay my own, own eyes on all the good things that are happening. So I appreciate what you guys do and would love to just see it in person too. So thank you. Anything else, board? Okay, awesome. Um, where are we? So financial. Yes, yeah. here we are. Financial report, Ms. Sappensley. Is she here? No report. Awesome, thank you. Uh, legislative liaison, uh, I'm sure done. Okay. I don't have a lot to say, but I have been keeping you guys uh, up to date on information. It is moving quickly even today we had a few things go down as to where some of these bills are uh, but one thing i wanted to note was we received from something from the tsba yesterday regarding the voucher program mm -hmm. i double checked before i came up here to make sure nothing had changed thankfully as if you know for something this afternoon it had not but it appears that that's dead for Thank this you. year <laughs> yep and just on a personal front i haven't said anything publicly about this but as someone that had a lot to learn about this voucher program, and as someone who honestly is a fan of Governor Lee all in all, 
this has been something I've been really concerned about, disappointed. Mm -hmm. uh, I graduated public schools. All my children have. We're committed to it. And I don't think they realize the impact this is having. And so there's hopefully now that this is dead between now and next year. Uh, and also I want to say to, um, I know he's not here, but to Mr. Mayo, just for him to get out ahead of this. Yeah. He was one of the superintendents that was the most vocal and was able to get his voice out there that really, I don't really know how all that rippled through, but it seemed to have a little bit of a ripple. Mm -hmm. And so I'm thankful for that too. So we have a great leader and um, yeah, thankful for that, yeah, that's that good. we're in this place now. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I appreciate your keeping us up to date on that stuff. Thanks for sending that things like that out to us when you get them. I, I really appreciate that. This is a big one. It'll. I, I am glad that it failed now. I, it's it's going to like you said, Kay. It's going to keep coming back up around. Uh, but we've at least got a year now with some time under our, you know, some time ahead of us to continue to oppose this type of legislation. Mm -hmm. It's just terrible for public schools, and so uh, I hope that we'll all participate as much as we can. Uh, and doing that very thing. I just, I just wanted to say one thing that the, the House uh, sponsor of the bill really concerned me when he came out with what he was really thinking, what he was telling some homeschool parents that the public education is, is trash, should be thrown in the trash. Yeah. And uh, that was very offensive and certainly offended teachers across the state as well as our students. Uh, everybody works really, really hard and uh, they're doing all they can uh, for our students and uh, it, it, it was quite offensive. So uh, s let's see, it was House Representative Sepecki. So remember yeah. that name. I know you can't vote for him or anything, but it's a shame. Against him, I mean. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's Maury, Maury County, I think, yeah, isn't he? I think he? that's right, yeah. Woo. Mr. Chair, yes. I would just like to say also that it is so sad when such wonderful things that are going on in our district and yet these legislators continue to say public schools are trash, we yeah. need to get rid of them, we're done with it, the, the smart kids don't go to public school. Yeah. Well, that's not the truth. That's right. And um, you all really need to, to look into this and, and get your faculties um, involved also because if we don't stand up for ourselves, no one will. That's right. Yeah, that's and it's very important that we do this and that we make a point to let them know, hey, we have some outstanding people in this district yeah. and they're in other districts all across the state. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, thank you, uh, Ms. Connolly. Thank you, Ms. Uh, uh, Ms. Williams, for those comments as well. I, I, I would agree and just say that uh, uh, please get involved, uh, parents, teachers, administrators, please get involved in this process. Uh, there, uh, clearly there are some issues in public schools in specific places. Uh, we all know that. That's not, a, that's not something that's new to us. But I, I would agree for the work that our teachers and administrators and parents and everybody that gets involved, to, to especially where we are in, in, in the suburbs around here specifically, I mean, there are just good good public schools and to be lumped in and to, for the finger to be pointed at public schools in general, knowing the work that happens here is a slap in the face, yeah. I think. And Certainly so, is. so let's, let's all keep up our double down our effort at least this year to, uh, just like with the legacy grants, this is so exciting yes. because the teachers and faculty members that have this creativity and have an idea that they want to do with the students and bring them forward. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad that we can participate and help them achieve those goals. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> All right. Uh, uh, thank you, Board. All right, we'll move on to consent agenda. Do I have an, uh, a motion to approve the consent agenda? I move. Motion, approve, uh, motion to approve by Ms. Conley, second by Mr. Dunn. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have it. The motion passes. Uh, we'll move on to our one business recommended action item. Easy one. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> That's right. No doubt. I'll turn this over to Mr. Goforth. Uh, thank you, Mr. Bridgman. Uh, our first and only, as you said, only item under business recommended action items is the superintendent's recommendation to approve implement weather days. Uh, if you recall, you know, we start the school year with 13 stockpile days, and we use five of those for professional development. Therefore, that leaves us eight stockpile days for intimate weather, other, you know, emergencies as a district. Uh, this year, Arlington High School and Donaldson Elementary School used five days for snow. 
Therefore, they have three days left um, this year, Arlington Elementary School and Arlington Middle School each use five days for snow and they use an extra day each for power outage. Right. Therefore, both of those schools have two days left. So with that information, uh, on behalf of Superintendent Mayo, it is my recommendation that we do not make up the implement weather days. All right. That's well, you have heard the recommendation from the superintendent uh, through Mr. Goforth. Uh, do I have a motion to approve? Mr. Chairman, yes. so moved. Yes. <laughs> moved by Ms. Williams, second by Ms. Conley. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the ayes have it. The motion passes. That was the easiest thing we've ever done here. Yeah, <laughs> all right. And that brings us to the end. And so we are adjourned.